an eargasm of learning, and a no-fuss show. Welcome to the Creative Talk Podcast, where you can learn straightforward topics about branding, digital entrepreneurship, online business, and many more with your charming host, John Santos, along with inspiring entrepreneurs, creators, and thought leaders worldwide. Our very special guest is, first, I'm a fan because... I am excited to know more about, you know, winning people, guiding people. I don't want to spill the topic, <laughs> but, but, you know, she's just an amazing human being. Um, she is a sales empowerment coach. So, guys, that itself says it all. <laughs> she trains business owners to sell and have magnet businesses. So, uh, our guest for today's episode, you know, creates businesses, guides people to, you know, magnify what they have. So who doesn't want to know how she do it? <laughs> and I'm, <laughs> I'm excited. All right. She is also the creator of Unlocked, key, key to sales success. Now, what is that? We will find out later. So I want to welcome in the Creative Talk podcast, our very own special guest, Ashley Britton. Welcome to the show. Hello, 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 everyone. I'm so excited for this conversation, and I'm excited to dive in a little bit more with you. Um, yeah, I've been sitting in anticipation for a while now. Like, I can't wait to get on here and be able to connect with everyone across the board or across the abroad, because I know that you speak with many different people from different areas of the world. So that's really cool as well. But to also have this great creative conversation with you as well. So I'm excited to dive in. Wow, thank you. You mentioned like, yes, you're right. We we have different nationalities that are being guests in the show. And Spotify gave us uh, a, a congratulatory message that we have 16 countries that consume and supports the show. So we're being supported in 16 different countries worldwide. How cool is that? That's amazing. <laughs> Congratulations. Congratulations also because you are now a part of that achievement. Thank you. <laughs> so <laughs> Ashley, let's start this. First is, you know, we've been having this talk off cam before we start the episode. Mm -hmm. I am excited and intrigued. Mm -hmm. Who influenced you or what influenced you to be in this position you are right now? You know, dealing with clients and not only clients, like I'm, you know, I'm assuming they're because they're business owners, they're in the game already. And, and correct me if I'm wrong, it's, it's, I think it's very hard to coach, you know, people that are experts in their field because they started something and they're earning. And then here you come, of course, with your expertise and there's a, there's a tension, right? So yeah. I, I will, I will, I will ask you to, you know, focus on that. Maybe you can give some mm -hmm. tips about that later, but mm -hmm. just to begin with what influenced you or who influenced you to be in that, in this great position you are in right now? Tell us your story, Ashley. The floor is yours. Uh, uh, actually, I wouldn't say it was a person. I would say it was an experience that I had that pushed me into the place I am now as a sales empowerment coach. I started out as a waitress. Like I was making $7.25 back in, I want to say 2000 and end of 2012, 2013. I was doing that for some time, but then I got approached by a sales company. And I was like, okay, I'm tired of making 725. Let's give this a shot. <laughs> um, and I began to just give it a shot. And let me tell you, my rookie years, I sucked. It was so bad. And I was like, oh no. And then I was like, okay, if I'm in this position, let me make the most of it. So I began to navigate sales. I wasn't the best, but then I began to hone in on me because you get into the sales industry and you see, like I was in a place where I would say it was like Wolf on Wall Street. If you've seen Wolf on Wall Street, that Ashley, was my experience. Ashley, I love that movie. The, you yeah. know, the, the story behind it is, is you yeah. know, it's to be fair, it's not yeah. nice, nice, but nice. the movie itself. Yes. Oof. 
I love that. <laughs> like, yeah, I love Leonardo DiCaprio. He's one of my favorite um, actors. <laughs> so I would say it was like Wolf on Wall Street and I was this little old lamb um, amongst a whole bunch of craziness. And I was like, okay, let me figure this out. And I began to hone in on my personality and my strengths first. And as I began to navigate that, uh, I began to realize that I was really in a wolf-like environment and I'm like, okay, how do I best navigate in this environment where I'm actually able to help people, partner with people and begin to really just assist and make their life better. Um, and as I began to navigate through that, I began to realize that this was something that I really had a knack for. It wasn't like something that was just out of the blue. It felt like it came natural as I began to continue to navigate in the sales industry. And then I realized about four or five months into the company, I ended up becoming a sales leader. And then about a year in, I built one of the biggest sales teams that generated the most money. We would make like four or $5,000 in a day with my team alone. And I was a female and my team was all men coming from the army background, coming from college, coming from really weird backgrounds. And I began to train them and build them and begin to just build a solid team. It was in that moment where I realized that this wasn't something that was that was just regular. This was something that was on the inside of me that I began to tap into and begin to impart in other people. And I already I loved um, working with people. I was very hospitable, but I realized I was a teacher and I had an ability to empower people to sell. And when I went from there, I began to study books. I began to watch people. I watched this lady's um uh, uh her training. Her name is. Danielle Leslie. And at that moment, um, after watching her, I said, okay, Ashley, how can you impact an industry? How can you impact people? Because I'm not here for just building businesses. I build people because when you build the people, the business is automatically transformed. I love that. So you I are to geared toward building people and not mm -hmm. just, you know, focus on building businesses. Wow. Yeah. No, wow. because businesses can come and go. But when you build the actual um, entrepreneur, when you begin to build them up, train them, walk with them, empower them, um, you will see more of a result than just building the business. Um, so then I began to see that that was something that was really dear to my heart. I said, okay, Ashley, let's begin to invade the entrepreneurial space and begin to invade the um, market space and begin to speak with entrepreneurs. If I can train an army veteran, okay, who is on the battlefield, did that for years and turn him into a salesperson, I can work with anybody, you know? And um, once I went from there, I felt like he was my biggest task. And I take him, his experience in that um, entire training thing that I went through with him, I take that with me everywhere I go. Because I feel like army vets, especially when they they come from, they come from the battlefield, they have a war mentality. Right. And being able to soften them up, begin to teach them how to speak, begin to teach them how to sell, begin to teach them how to build relationships. I feel like I can really work with anyone. So it's like walking into conversations with entrepreneurs now, I don't get afraid of no. I embrace the no because no to me doesn't necessarily say no. It's like, okay, why are you? What, what's causing you to say no? Because behind that no, breaking down that wall of separation, there is a yes somewhere back there. It's my job to navigate and begin to figure out how to wow. get to the yes. You remind me of I um it's it's not the same you know structure of words but the context you remind me of uh, Grant Cardone. Yeah, he 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 also um said that that it's oh. not a no. The funny thing is, I rem if I remember it correct, he was a guest in Jordan Belfort's podcast. Oh, wow. <laughs> and 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 he said that. It's not a no, mm -hmm. because somewhere down the road, down the conversation, there's a yes. Mm -hmm. So that's why yeah. I, I I remembered when he said that because oh. of the the story you told me. Mm -hmm. You mentioned in your story that you know you you are the lamb among the wolves, and <laughs> your team is you know men, 
And it's, you know, it's a man eat man mentality in sales, right? Mm -hmm. First question, and I want you to be honest, mm -hmm. and I know you are. Mm -hmm. Were you not scared? Um, I was afraid um, because for me going into it, I'm like, these men won't listen to me. Exactly. Um, but I've come to find that it was way more easier to work with a group of men than leading a group of women. It's so <laughs> weird, especially in that type of environment. Right. Um, because it was such a cutthroat environment, it was like, you need to have thick skin. Like when I tell you thick skin, and if you don't have the right emotional space or the mental space and your mind is not there, it just wouldn't work in that specific um, market that I worked in. But in the beginning, I was really afraid. But then as I began to build with them and they begin to trust me, they trusted my voice. So after a while, that fear went away because the team that I built trust me, they relied on me, they depended on me um, because it was like, okay, if I'm having a hard time closing a sale, Ashley, can you go out into the field with me? I would go into the field with people and literally go to their appointments with them and begin to help them along the way, give them tips, give them strategies, give them different wording on how to build with people because it's so easy to go into um, a, a sale and just look at it like, oh, this is a really big account. I need to get this money. And it's just like the customer can feel that. But when they realize that you're connecting with them as a human being, you're like a real person. And they see that you care more about them, their establishment, how to build them, how to partner with them, how you can save them money, but how you can ultimately partner with them and not just close the deal. And I'm gone until it's time to renew your account. But realize that I'm after the deal is made, I'm still walking with you. If you have any questions, here's my cell phone number. Give me a call. If you have any issues, give me a call. If you ever need help, give me a call. And I found that once you did it like that, I began to see relationships build. Even after I left that market, I had customers still calling my phone. And they're like, Ashley, I'm like, I'm so sorry. I'm not there anymore. <laughs> Um, and they really built a relationship with me and established a relationship with me. A lot of my clients that I closed in followed me the entire three years that I was there. Wow, so that's nice. That's nice. Um, it, it sounds so, and I believe you, and I totally agree mm -hmm. because, you know, I'm a fan. I, I love the vibe. I love the spirit. And I know your journey was not easy. Having said that, um, I know especially in your niche in sales, that failure is something, you know, that you always deal, you know, day-to-day -day basis, in a day-to-day -day basis. What is your unforgettable moment in dealing with failure? The, the ultimate, the ultimate one. Oh, man, the ultimate. <laughs> Please do share. Oh, man, this is tricky. Um, oh, man. The ultimate failure. Because, uh, you know, Ashley, because Ashley, be, 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 before you, you answer my question, mm -hmm. um, I think it's on the earlier episode of The Creative Talk. We mm -hmm. had a guest. He's from Singapore. He's very, he's very popular there. He's also dealing with sales. And he mentioned mm -hmm. in, in the story that while he was explaining his journey, that his first failure like he will never forget that he couldn't sleep and he couldn't eat. He was, he described it like a, a girlfriend left you, you know, a relationship broke. So <laughs> that's how, imagine that, that's how painful it is. So mm -hmm. I'm excited to know <laughs> your story. <laughs> so I would say, um, Failure always comes. It may not be that big. It will be small. I feel like we have to embrace failure in sales period because it ultimately assists us on our journey to be better. So failure is actually sometimes a partner in success because it literally takes you to where you need to go and you won't do it again. However, I will say um, my biggest failure could have also ultimately been in the early years. Oh my gosh. <sighs> <laughs> game, game, come on. <laughs> because it's like when you don't listen and you drill in still and you're not listening, let me tell you, I want to say that I probably lost a $10,000 account 
Huh? Because yes, in my early years, because I did not listen. And let me tell you, I cried. I'm like, oh my gosh, I lost this. Like because well, why? I did not well, how? Because what do you mean I, you didn't listen? I did not listen to what the person was actually coming from me about. So they had a specific pain point. They had a specific issue. And because I did not know how to answer it, I lost it. So when you don't like people, there are some customers that want straightforward answers. They want to know the ins, the outs and everything. And in my early years, I didn't really know how to navigate those questions at all. I just knew the surface level. And because I didn't have any depth in that time, and it was just very surface level. It was like a puddle. You step in a puddle and it's just like, oh, you know, it was very surface level. I did not have any depth at all. And having that conversation with that person really caused me to realize like, okay, Ashley, you need some substance as a salesperson. And you can't just go into this thinking that your smile is gonna do the job. Because a lot of people won't fall for the smile. They want to know what you know. They want to know how you do it. They want to know price points. They want to know what the what the um the bad parts of your product is. They want to know the good parts of what your product is. And because I wasn't um really um I didn't have that language at the time, it really caused me to lose that really big deal. And I really tried to go back time and time again afterwards. I'm like, I know more now, you know what I'm saying? Um, but because sometimes when they have that first bad experience with you it'll cause you like cause like a bad taste you know and in my early years I will never forget I lost that account because I didn't have any depth and I didn't have any substance and because I didn't really address the actual questions that this guy had for me and it caused me to lose the sale I learned wow. better because I started reading books and I started to understand wow. and another thing is is that especially in sales, no matter what market you're in, it's always important to do your homework on who you are approaching. And I failed at doing homework with this guy. I failed understanding the restaurants that came with him. I failed actually paying attention to my environment and being able to read his body language. Like I didn't pay attention to all of that. So I would say that account haunts me to this day. I want to say that was within year one um, because yeah, that was within year one. And I've been doing this for over almost 10 years now. Yeah. Um, but $10, that was $10,000. Ah. Yeah. Uh, well, really you gain, you gain a lot of learning and mm -hmm. you know, that sharpened you to mm -hmm. you know, perform better and, and figure out things, you know, mm -hmm. um, failure just, just to, you know, uh, support that statement. Failure is only a failure when you don't learn from it. Mm -hmm. Once you learn from that experience, for me, that's not failure. Because mm -hmm. you gain something. Of course, you lost the deal. Yes, it's $10,000, mm -hmm. $20,000. Yes. Mm -hmm. But when you, you, know, you learn, you make an assessment, you figure out what didn't work out. Mm -hmm. What happened? How can I improve? What can I do so that that incident will not happen again? Mm -hmm. Once you figure that out, you learn something. Mm -hmm. It means you gain something. Yeah. And that's success. Mm -hmm. I made sure I didn't lose a big deal like that ever again. I'm telling you. <laughs> <laughs> I made sure of it and just made sure that I was more intentional with building with people rather than just being surface level. Wow. Okay. Fast forward. Mm -hmm. Um, I want you to talk about, this is my, uh, I mentioned this in, in the intro part, you're mm -hmm. dealing with business people and I'm really intrigued. You're dealing with people who started something who are, or maybe not, you know, generating income, but they're the big dogs, the top dogs in the A game mm -hmm. and you're there. Mm -hmm. Tell me the story. Is it? hard what is the experience coaching with people like this is it, it you know there's tension or is it the other way is it smoother um i would say it always depends on the person but what i do find the hardest part of coaching is not the actual coaching process it's the follow-through that's the hardest um because my thing is i want to invest in you but what I want you to do is also take that investment 
and apply it and make sure that what you've been given, you have to apply and make it work for you. So I would say it's the definitely the follow through that is always the hardest and just ensuring that they follow through on everything that they learned and actually apply it so that they can see results. I would say during coaching sessions, it's more so getting to the root of their problems and not giving them the answer when I find out. So this is the thing. Oh, so, I love that. So you figure it out what is the problem, but you're not saying it and you want them mm-hmm. to discover it. Yes. So wow. it's, yeah, it's navigating them. Th- so my coaching, like, cause, because I'm a sales empowerment coach, it's a sales coach, but I'm also an empowerment coach at the same exact time. They go hand in hand. And if you just give the answers, it doesn't make the process like enlightening. But majority of the time I go in, I listen, I already know what the issue is, but my job is to ask questions, to navigate you to the answer, and then we go from there. Um, you're just giving the answer is easy, but if they haven't um, opened their mind up to what the real problem is yet, um, it's like it's like a, a worthless conversation. So it's more so navigating them to the problem and me already having the answer to provide it. Wow, I, I love the technicality and the approach you have in your program. Mm-hmm. Wow, no wonder you are an expert in that field. Now, of course, we have we don't have enough time to you know to discover all those <laughs> learning in building a person and in doing what you do, mm-hmm. but. Mm-hmm. I would love you to give us tips for all our viewers, for all our listeners out there. Mm-hmm. Tips on how to be, you know, you, we can never be the best salesperson, right? But yeah. but I want you to give us tips, a chunk of your approach, how we can be, let me say, let me use the word effective in mm-hmm. doing sales. Your tips. Yeah for everyone to be an effective salesperson or to have uh, an effective sales approach? Yes. So um, I off automatically to the top of my head, it's two tips, but they fall into three categories, but they're going to be fast. Um, so the first one would you be- have all the time. You have the all, you have all <laughs> the time, Ashley, feel free to explain it thoroughly. <laughs> Okay, so the first one, I wrote a book called Keys to Sales Success, the Sales Manual. And one of the tips inside of that book is called the triple threat, right? It's having personality, being knowledgeable, and being skillful, right? So the personality part, I come for people who the, um, try to be on the um, the um, end of the spectrum about being introvert versus extrovert. And that's a whole nother conversation in itself. But when you have the personality to begin to navigate conversations, people say, I don't have any personality because I'm an introvert. When you have passion for what you do, it, 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 it exudes through your personality. So when you have a passion for something that you love to do, it changes the game. When you love what you do, you believe in what you're doing, it changes the type of conversation that you have, and it begins to transform your personality in a way that you did not think it will be able to do. So your personality, I would say, would be the icing on the cake and the sprinkles. It's the pretty parts. It's the part of the cake that makes people be, they're drawn to the actual cake itself. They see the sprinkles. You see when little kids go into the baker, baker shop, they see the pretty things on the um, cake and they're like, oh, I want it. That's the thing that actually draws people to you. So being able to realize that even if you're an introvert, allow your passion to be the thing that causes people to be drawn to your products or your service. It doesn't matter if you have a coaching program. It doesn't matter if you're selling t-shirts. It doesn't matter if you have a store on the corner, whatever it is, people, every company has a personality. Every company has a personality. They all have characteristics. It's being able to allow people to be drawn to your personality through the passion that you exude and through the love that you have for what you're doing. So personality is super duper key, but also realizing that you're not going to um, uh, pretty much say, I can't do it because I'm an introvert, but realize that, yes, I'm an introvert, but allow my passion to be the thing that causes people to be drawn to me. And if I am an extrovert, let my bubbly thing be the thing that's called that causes people to draw people in, but also having knowledge. 
So you have personality, you have knowledge, knowledge on your product. Make sure that what you're selling, you know the ins and outs of it, okay? Don't just launch something because it sounds nice and it sounds good. You need to understand the market. You need to understand your competitors. You need to understand the price points. You need to understand your customer's market. Like if you're a coach and you're coaching someone who is in the beauty industry, understand the beauty industry so that you can effectively uh, market to them and begin to talk to them in a way where you're talking their language. So many times I find that coaches speak their own language when in reality, sometimes our language could be so intricate that they're like, I don't know what that means, but being able to deliver your message in a way where they understand it and where they're able to actually take what you said and apply it. So personality is cool. It's the pretty things on the outside. The knowledge is the actual substance of the cake. It's the inside. It's the not, it tastes good. And you don't want to keep, you don't want to stop eating it because it tastes so good. And then you have the skill. Now I call the skill, the actual knife that cuts into the cake. It's the pre pre precision and, you know, navigating and being able to cut through nicely, being, making sure that you're not messing anything up. Everyone hates a weird sliced cake. Some people I want do. the cake. I, I hate it. I hate it, but I end up eating it. <laughs> but, but, but you still I agree. eat it. <laughs> yes, you still eat it. But the knife is the thing that's the precision. It allows you to operate. It allows you to navigate. It allows you to navigate through conversation. It allows you to understand pain points. It, uh, it um, helps you understand what's going on in the, on the inside of them to best understand the position that they're in and navigate them. I tell people all of the time that you are the GPS for your client. You are the Siri for your client, okay? You are the ways, if you use ways, you are the ways for your client, you know? So you're taking them from point A to point B. And that's the best way to be a triple threat is to make sure your, your personality is on point, is to make sure that your, um, your knowledge is A1, and it's also making sure that you're skillful in what you do and being okay to say, okay, maybe I'm not well-versed in this area. Let me learn. Let me go and read some books. Let me watch some coaches and begin to just get more well-versed in this area. So I would say to all of the people out there, personality, knowledge, and skill is the best way, just applying those three, to be able to generate and scale in your business and be able to sell whatever product or service you have. Be a triple threat, y'all, because I'm telling you, when you're a triple threat, you're able to really do what you need to do and see your business succeed. And then- Wow. <laughs> yes, please continue. I just can't contain myself. I'm- it's like knowledge after knowledge after knowledge, you know, wow. So please continue and, and yes. just don't, don't, don't mind me. <laughs> <laughs> and the last one I would say is a sales principle that I created along the way. Um, as I've been coaching, I've been able to have the opportunity to create sales principles for people to take with them and consistently learn and dig into to be able to be better. And that sales principle is called Inc., right? And you think of ink, it's like the ink that's inside of the pen. You're writing, you're writing, and it's the thing that's able to allow you to best articulate on paper what you're trying to do, right? So I would say the first letter would be I, and that's inspire. When you are a coach, when you are a, a service provider, whatever the case be, may be, you want to inspire the demographic of people that you are called to. Like when people see you, they should be inspired by everything that you do. When they see you, when they read your content, when they read your books, when they attend your coaching sessions, when they buy products from your store, when you go into a store, you get excited when you see an article of clothing that you like and you actually imagine yourself in it already. And you're saying, wow, this would look nice with this. This would look nice with this. And now you have this entire picture um, you created from this one thing. And it's being able to inspire the people that you're actually um, called to um, and being able to do it in a way where it draws them to a space to want to pull from you, to be able to learn from you, to be able to take what you give them and run with it and just be inspired by what you do. And then after you've inspired your audience, nurture them. Okay. It's like you have a baby, you know, and you're rocking them and you're just 
have them right here and you're walking hand in hand with them and you're nurturing them and you're getting to know them and they're getting to know you. They're getting to understand your brand voice. They're getting to understand your product. They're getting to understand your, um, your business based off of just you nurturing them as a potential partner. The one thing I do hate, um, the one thing I'd, um, I'm trying to get out of saying is the word client because it just seems so businessy. I want to create partnerships and I want people to realize that partnerships are lasting. That's something that you create when you have a partner, when you have a friendship, whatever the case may be. It's lasting when you nurture it, when you pay attention to it, they see that they can trust your voice and they see that they can trust everything that you're saying to them. So being able to nurture them in a way where they say, I know that so-and-so is, the, they have the goods. I know this person is an expert based off of them walking with me. So not just closing deals, not just going to people because you wanna make a really good sale or you wanna sell your $5,000 um, package or whatever the case may be, but being able to do it in a way where you're nurturing them and you're walking hands with, hand in hand with them so that they can see like, oh, I'm not just, this $5,000, okay, I can do this because this person is being true to who they are and they're trustworthy and their vo voice is trustworthy. So being able to nurture them in that way. And it's knowledge again, the K, K word, here we go again, because knowledge is so important. Knowledge is so key, knowledge is power. When you know what you're doing and when people know that what you're giving them is of substance, it's really has something to like something that is on the inside of it, it's packaged the right way where I can literally unwrap it and know that what I'm unwrapping is something on the inside that I've been waiting for. It's like during Christmas or during the holidays or whatever the case may be, or your birthday and you're unwrapping this gift and you're like, oh man, oh man, oh man, oh man. And you're excited because what you unwrapped was something that you really wanted and something that you could really use. That's knowledge. Knowledge is a package of something that you want, that you need, that can make your life better, that can make your business better. And that could just make you an all around better person. So being able to package the knowledge that you have in a way that when you give them the knowledge, they are looking forward to it and they realize it's something that they, they can actually apply. Ooh, ooh, <laughs> that's knowledge bomb after knowledge bomb, <laughs> Ashley. Wow. My takeaway, knowledge, of course, mm -hmm. value, mm -hmm. authenticity. Yes. Don't get me started on authenticity. <laughs> That's a whole nother thing that I've realized I've learned this year. Like I would say 2020 was the year of authenticity um, and being able to teach people how to not get stuck in comparison, not getting stuck in the imposter syndrome, not getting stuck in insecurities, because those are the things that actually stop businesses from growing or stop people from growing when they begin to compare and get stuck in this cycle of what whatever they're going through and realize that your authenticity matters, your voice matters, what you have matters. People need it, they want it, but staying true to who you are is the key to doing that. Wow, I agree, I totally agree. And for sure, for sure, we will have you back for another <laughs> episode awesome. and we will dig in authenticity because you're right, mm -hmm. that's a whole new different topic. <laughs> but again, Ashley, wow, so much input, so much tips. And, you know, with this episode, I believe that people that are in this niche will really find this, um, your story valuable. It's a guiding point for them to acknowledge a lot of things because mm -hmm. I do, I, I, I found like, you investing heavily in, to summarize that you focusing on a client centric you know mm -hmm. business a client centric approach and mm -hmm. i love that because when you you invest in the person you build mm -hmm. partnership you build a relation and that's what you said and i love that it mm -hmm. it lasts longer you know it it builds more opportunities because mm -hmm. you focus on harnessing something that is valuable, authentic, and genuine. And that's building a relationship. It's not easy. It's hard. It involves a lot of trust. And, you know, it involves a lot of time. Just like yes. you courting in a relationship, you know, man and a woman, it, it builds through time. Honesty, 
and mm-hmm. the journey goes on but once mm-hmm. it gets the ball rolling you know it 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 opens up a lot of windows mm-hmm. for opportunities that would benefit not only you mm-hmm. but your partner or people under that business whatever that may be and mm-hmm. with that i thank you ashley for sharing so much so much input thank you so much and in behalf of the creative team creative talk podcast the viewers the listeners thank you thank you for having me. we we learn a lot <laughs> now we are in the part of the show that we will play again it's a tradition here in the creative talk podcast that we play this specific game the goal of this game is yes you are an expert we talk about things that deals with your expertise but you're also a human being sometimes you don't know mm-hmm. what to say you just want to laugh act silly and this is where that will be the focus all right okay mm-hmm. this part of the show is called the creative fast talk okay we will ask you questions that you are not allowed to spend too much time thinking what the answer should be the first word that comes into your mind shoot all right okay. questions are so random that my team gave it to me in the middle of our episode all oh, right wow. so bear with me although i have the choice i have the decision to choose which one will go first and some of your answers will lead to other connecting questions see okay. how tricky it is <laughs> i'm so nervous oh my gosh all right okay. are you ready ashley yes i am <laughs> All right, we'll we'll start with the easy question, you know. Okay. Just like a uh, level one, and then it gets to the boss. <laughs> okay. All right. Question number one: Favorite color? Yellow. Yellow. Passenger or driver? Passenger, definitely. Hot or cold? Hot. The mountains or the beaches? Neither. <laughs> Wow, that's that's a first time. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Next, if you're an animal, what animal would you be and why? A chameleon. Oh, sorry, what? A chameleon. A chameleon, why? A chameleon because uh of how they begin to adapt to different environments and adapt to where they are and how they blend in and things of that nature. I've come to find that I have a very chameleon-like personality and um characteristics to me. So I would definitely say chameleon. Wow, wow. Yes, I agree. I agree. Um next, movies or books? Movies. Okay, since you answered movies, what is your top 3? There's a flying fly in the office. <laughs> yeah. Okay, since you answered movies, what is your top 3 mm-hmm. best movies of all time? Definitely Avengers Endgame. <laughs> okay. Definitely uh Twilight is definitely mm. one of my favorites. Um, and I would say the born identity. Ooh, I love that. I love that. Mm-hmm. Okay, since you answered movies, mm-hmm. next question is the cinemas or Netflix? Netflix. Okay, next. Weird question. <laughs> All right, okay. Soap or toothbrush? Soap or toothbrush? <laughs> toothbrush? Uh, toothbrush. All right. Your dream superpower and why? Definitely be invisible. Mm, why? To be able to have the opportunity to snoop in on some conversations that no one knows I'm there. I definitely be because of Fantastic Four when the um, invisible woman, she would just go invisible anytime she really wanted to. And that's she's the reason why I would want to go invisible. Mm, okay, next. What is something that is always in your bag when you were a kid? <laughs> snacks. <laughs> Can you still remember what specific snack it is? So, I loved to, I don't even know if they make it anymore, but mm. it's a candy bar called Take Four and they had like pretzel and I think <gasps> peanut butter on the inside yeah, of it. Yeah, 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 I know that. I know that. I think there's it, it's it's not it's not being produced anymore. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think so, but definitely a Take Four. I always had it. I would go and get it right before school and hide it in my bag and sneak it in class. Mm. Okay. The last question is a trademark in this game. It could be serious or um something that is, you know, light. 
It can be anything depends on you, okay? Last question is, if you have the power to bring back someone back from the dead, who would it be and why? It could be anyone, a relative, a historical figure, a friend, a fictional character, anyone. If you have the power to bring back someone back from the dead, who would it be and why? Tony Stark. Mm. And that's because I'm not okay with the fact that they took him out of the Avengers movies. <laughs> I cried when he died in uh, the end game. I really cried in the movie theater. And I was really sad because he was one of my, he's one of my favorite Avengers. So I would definitely bring back Tony Stark because he is the icon of the Avengers uh, circa. <laughs> All right. Okay. Okay. Well, Thank you so much, Ashley. Now, if you have any promotions, you know, online releases, I know you have, a, is that a book or a workbook on Amazon, social media accounts, programs, events, online events, feel free to promote it. The floor is yours. Okay, so as of right now, I do have two products out. I do have my book, ebook sales manual called the Unlocked Keys to Sales Success Sales Manual, which is on Amazon. And I have my Unlocked uh, Making the Salesperson, uh, Unlocking the Salesperson and You coaching program that will be launching this year where I will walk with entrepreneurs for an entire month and a half and begin to walk with them, coach them, be their personal coach at their beck and call. I am here to be able to ensure that they have the money mindset to and make sure that they have every process in place to generate income for their business, to be able to give them sales tips and um, principles to be able to implement in their business and begin to see direct revenue flow from everything that they got during the process, which also has this new thing that I've implemented is called um, sales calls, where I'm able to actually go in on a sales call, whether that's them trying to coach someone else and them having conversations, I become their employee on their beck and call to be able to help them live closing their deals, whether that's their services and helping them begin to sell their products, e-commerce, or um, helping them begin to deliver their um, product or service on Instagram and they're having Instagram conversations, whatever it is, I am able to be their employee for a day to begin to help them generate sales as well. So unlock, unlocking the salesperson in you coaching um, program is definitely coming this year. Uh, social media accounts that you want to promote so that they can reach you, send you DMs. Do you have Facebook, Instagram? Yes. So my Facebook and Instagram for my business are both called um, unlock the sale. Facebook is unlock the sale LLC. Instagram is just unlock the sale. Or you could follow me and contact me on my personal page. And that's officially Ashley Britton. Um, and I'm contactable on all of them. I'm pretty active. So I would never miss a message. Right. So guys, feel free to connect with Ashley. I'm sure she will guide you to be the best of who you are in mm -hmm. sales and you know, as a leader, as a coach, connect with her, find her releases. And I want to say thank you that you 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 announced your program to to here in the podcast. You know, mm -hmm. it's a it's a big thing that our podcast is a part of something big in your niche. And thank you for announcing it here in the show. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All me. right. So guys, um, I hope you learn a lot because I am amazed. I learned a lot from Ashley and I'm sure you guys did. So feel free to check us on Spotify, Apple podcast, YouTube, and Instagram, the creative talk podcast. Feel free, subscribe, like, and follow. Always be happy, smile, have a positive outlook in life. Again, mm -hmm. thank you, Ashley. Thank you, everyone. This is The Creative Talk with me, Jan Santos, and Ashley Britton saying, God bless. Bye. Bye, guys. Thank you for being with us here on The Creative Talk Podcast. I'm your host, John Santos. Don't forget to listen and subscribe on your favorite podcast platform. See you again, always.